Hey guys, today we are talking about a watercolor set not from AliExpress but from Amazon. You might be familiar with this brand. We are talking about the Meaden watercolor set. Now, I have purchased their empty palettes before as well as their half bands and been pretty impressed. But am I going to be as impressed with the full pans or rather the filled half pans as I was with them when they were empty? There is only one way to find out. You're going to have to watch for more. Hey there art nerds during our student grade showdown we have reviewed a lot of watercolors from a lot of different brands some of them from the actual brand that manufactured it some of them have been white labeled from other brands today we're taking a look at probably a white label we're taking a look at the Meaden watercolor paints these were purchased off of Amazon right after Hurricane Ida. So I've had them for a little while, but I'm really looking forward to unwrapping them, unboxing them, and swatching them for you guys today. First things first, we gotta bust into this packaging. Obviously, I have gotten rid of the Amazon packaging. I believe I ordered a bunch of stuff and also ordered this, so it probably came in an Amazon box. The real question is going to be, who is the original manufacturer of this? Because Meaden tends to white label a lot of things. That doesn't mean everything Meaden offers is terrible. It just means that they come from a variety of sources. So today we get to play the game of who is the original parent for this Meaden 48 color half pan watercolor set that is handy and sturdy, easy to hold and take for travel, premium watercolor paint, they all like to say that, and none of them are. Bright colors, high saturation, and easy to dissolve. So I'm beginning to start to think that just means made of dye. On the back, it says Meaden, Meaden 48 colors, watercolor paint set. There's a QR code, Meaden is for art, and then they have their two or their customer service email and their website. So this set was purchased on Amazon for a pretty normal price of $29.95. I have purchased Meaden products in the past. I actually really like their empty palettes and their half pans. And this one seems to come in the really cute watercolor pan. You'll see that in a minute. At least that's what the listing says. So, yep, that's exactly what we got. Perfect. So I have kind of no no expectations i hope this will be okay i figure this is white labeled but i don't think this is going to be a terrible product nor do i think it's going to be an amazing product but i am hoping it is a good product so i am hoping that from today's review we will walk away with another student grade watercolor palette that i can recommend to you guys and that i can recommend to my students as well and i might even get super lucky and find my next meiliang pigment set which is a student grade watercolor that I happen to just really love. So without further ado, let's go ahead and open our palette. We've already got some good, some bad, and some ugly with this set. So let's start out with the good. I like the metal palette that it's in. It's a pretty typical metal palette, very cute on the outside. And you guys know I like me some cute art supplies. It has a flimsy metal thumb ring on the back that is painful to use, but that I'm saying that based on my experiences with my Daily Driver watercolor palette, all of these tin metal palettes tend to have some of the same kind of flaws. So it's not a flaw inherent to this palette, just this type of palette. They have their name screened on the inside. They have a swatch card here, and we aren't getting necessarily like, like phthalo blue. We're getting colors like fruit green or coffee, which I've noticed the companies that use dyes in their watercolors as their watercolors and no pigments at all, they tend to lean in that direction. So that's kind of scary, but I do like that they included a swatch card. We have 48 colors. They are very bright, which is concerning because 
the mass tone is so bright it indicates there's a lot of optical brighteners. We also have a lot of dust and schmutz on these. They're also not individually wrapped. And while I complain frequently about excessive waste when it comes to art supply packaging, no wrapping on your watercolor palette generally indicates that these are very cheap watercolors. They're not afraid of the humectant drying out or getting sticky. It's typically indicative of a lower market watercolor. And it also comes with a pack-in water brush. And these are usually fine. Um, I don't really care for the water brushes myself, so I'm not really going to be taking a look at this today. I'm going to hold on to it because they can be useful sometimes and my students like them. So typically, even if I really like a palette and I don't like the water brush, I'll just give it to my students. So what I want to do next is we're going to start swatching these, but they are very dusty. I got to dust these off first. Before we start swatching, I want to thank my patrons on Patreon. It's their support on Patreon that allows me to be able to afford to review art supplies like this one. So all the funds from my Patreon go right back into the channel and the most common use for them is buying art supplies to review. Although I also use Patreon funds when I can to purchase the consumables that get used up when I'm reviewing these art supplies. So if you like what I do and you want to help me continue to do it, you can join me at patreon.com slash soup. Not only will you get the pride of knowing that you're helping to make art education more accessible and more available because most of what I do here I share freely to help other artists because I really want you guys to be able to make art a habit and I know with funding being cut to schools more and more people are turning online to either start learning about art from a young age or to go back and fill in the holes in their art education so they can start pursuing art either for a hobby or as a career as an adult. And I'm very proud to know that I have helped hundreds of people take that first step and get going making art, whether it's the in-person classes that I teach or the 10 plus years of online art outreach that I've done. And my patrons have made that a possibility. They've made that a reality. It is their help and their support that makes it possible. And if you join me on Patreon, not only do you get to feel awesome for knowing that you're making art education a little bit more accessible, a little bit more egalitarian, but you also get early access to reviews like this one as well as tutorials and you get access to the materials that I generate for my in-person classes. And that's something that I don't share freely online. So if you like what I do and you wanna help me continue to do it, you can join me at patreon.com slash soup. Thank you guys so much for your help and support over the years. It truly means the world to me and is really the reason I can keep doing this both financially and emotionally. Thank you guys so much. Before we start swatching these premium watercolors, I do wanna read what the Meaden listing says on Amazon. And I purchased these on October 15th, 2021. So that makes it pretty handy. So this is a 48 piece set. The tin itself is metal as we know. This is a portable watercolor palette, 48 colors watercolor paint set in the volume of 1.5 milliliter half pan size, combined with a metal watercolor tin case in the size of 21.5 centimeters by 11 centimeters by two centimeters length width height, easy to take for travel. Watercolor based art paint, 48 colors in total, which are commonly used and come with perfect intensity and water solubility, meet your needs of painting with ease. Easy use. These solid watercolor paints are easily removed and inserted into the metal tin by which you could always replace these watercolors with colors you prefer. Hint, 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 hint. Exquisite design. Metal tin with thumb ring on the bottom and fold out palette features navy blue enamel exterior. Um, no, it does not. <laughs> and white enamel interior, shining and sturdy and easy to wipe clean, just fits your hand, versatile, an ideal paints up for traveling or field sketch painting, also a perfect gift for professional artists, watercolor painters, students, beginners, and more. So they made a lot of claims with this set that I don't think it's going to live up to. What I was hoping to see 
was I was hoping to either see a white label of the Superior Master Level watercolors or of the Meaden watercolors. Those are very common, popular white label palettes. And I know what to expect from them. And they're half decent. I like them decently well. And that would mean this is a better palette than maybe what I had expected. And it would also fit about in that $30 price range. These look like they're going to be dye-based watercolors. But you know, guys, there's really only one way, only one way to find out. And that means we got to get to swatching. I'm going to start my swatches with their included swatch test. Then I'm going to move on to my standard, the Blick Studio Cotton Rag Watercolor Paper. And I'm going to do my swatching with a regular watercolor brush. And the reason for that is I don't like water brushes. Uh, I find them difficult to control and I don't want my dislike of the brush to bias my opinion of the palette. And I'm also not just relying on their swatch sheet because I don't want the fact that this is a probably cheaper cellulose watercolor paper to prevent me from being able to give a fair and as unbiased as possible opinion of these paints. These were purchased out of pocket with funds raised from Patreon. I have no affiliation with Meaden. All opinions are my own and they are based on my years and years of watercolor experience painting my comic, Seven Inch Kara, painting watercolor illustrations and teaching watercolor. So I have a very different use case for watercolor than a lot of the watercolor artists here on YouTube. I'm a watercolor comic artist. I am going to be looking at it with that eye, but I'm also going to be just generally gauging it by general watercolor standards. And that kind of colors the tests we're going to be doing today. We're going to be doing swatching. We're going to be doing color mixing, both atomic and optical. And we're going to be doing what I call a wet into wet test. And that kind of covers the gamut of the basics of what you would want to expect a watercolor palette to be able to do. And it also lets me know if these are worth field testing in the future because I have gotten burned by bad watercolors before and those three tests give me a really good idea of what I can expect from this palette. So before we start our swatching, I'm going to use some clean filtered water. I also use filtered water for these tests because again, I want to be as fair and unbiased as possible. I want to remove any external factors that might negatively impact my opinion so that I'm judging the paint as fairly as I can. I'm also going to be doing my swatching with clean filtered water because that's what I use now for my watercolor paintings and my watercolor illustrations and it's what I use for all my tests. The same with the Blick Studio. So those are some content constants that have been across the student grade showdown is the same papers, pretty much the same brushes and high quality clean filtered water. So one thing, I, I, I moved this and then I started to notice something. One thing I've already started to notice, that is a red flag. It doesn't mean these are all terrible, but it's definitely not good. Not, not something you want to see. Is you see the areas where I've spritzed it with water, how those have gotten a lot lighter? That's usually very indicative of extenders or optical brighteners. And while those things in and of themselves are not necessarily bad. All student grade watercolors do use optical brighteners and extenders to some extent, especially those in half pans. It makes them look more appealing. You don't want it to be to the point where the paint stop really working like watercolor anymore because that they then they have used so many cheap fillers to make the paints cheaper and more appealing that they just don't do what they're supposed to do. And that's something we've seen in the student grade showdown time and time again. There have been some definite standout gems and that's why I'm still doing this showdown is to find those standout gems and share them with you guys but I'm also sharing the flops with you guys because if I can help you guys save some money and if I can point you guys towards a palette you're going to like better that's going to help make art a habit for you if you're using supplies you like and enjoy it's going to make art that much more accessible. And speaking of accessible art, I have a watercolor crash course here on the channel. If you want to learn how to watercolor, I walk you through all kinds of basics to help you build confidence and start your watercolor journey today. And of course, I have some more advanced watercolor tutorials as well. I'll link all of those down as playlists down in the description for you guys, but I do hope you'll check them out. The colors in this set are Scarlet Vermilion Pink, Baby Pink, Red Orange Orange, Light Orange Yellow, Deep Yellow Complexion, Golden Yellow, Permanent Yellow, and Citrine, 
crimson, rubine, rosy, dark green, aquamarine blue, atrovirens, army green, grass green, bright green, fruit green, bluish yellow, tea color, reddish violet, violet, purple, dark blue, mid blue, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, lake blue, peacock blue, sky blue, light blue, permanent green, light, bluish violet, Plum purple, dark purple, reddish brown, brown, coffee, deep yellow ochre, yellow ochre, black, dark gray, silver, and white. These swatched okay at first, and I sort of hope that these might be kind of like the Meiliang pigments, but as soon as I hit the neutrals, I knew there's dye in these here hills. The earth tones tend to be really cheap pigments to produce so there's no reason to cheap out and use dyes unless the whole set is dye based. Those of y'all who have watched my student grade showdown know how I feel about dye based watercolors. They have no real place in my watercolor life. You guys might notice I'm doing a checkerboard pattern for these swatches. It's because they're adjacent and I wanted to paint this as quickly as possible and by having the fewest numbers, fewest number of touching sides I can paint most of the squares so basically by the time I finish one set I can go back and paint the other set and it's pretty dang satisfying to watch I have to admit I'm also brushing it out with a little bit of clean water to try to encourage some granulation or some color movement or some gradation basically this is going to give me some information about how these paints are going to handle At first, I felt like these swatched okay, and I kind of hoped that these might be like the Mei Liang pigments paints. But as soon as I hit the neutrals, I knew there's dye in these there heels. The earth tones tend to be really cheap pigments to produce, so there's not really a good reason to cheap out and use dyes unless the whole set is dye based. Those of y'all who have watched my student grade showdown, y'all know how I feel about dye based watercolors. They just have no real place in my watercolor life. Now, something I found interesting is that doing a quick look at the reviews on Amazon, and generally I don't look at the reviews until I finish my own review because I don't want to bias my opinions, this set is really well liked in the reviews. There's a lot of four and five stars. There are people who are literally claiming this set has changed their life. So while I'm working on my next set of tests, I'll try to keep that in mind and look for the positive points, but I don't think that it's going to, how do I put this? Um, I'm hope I'm, I hope I'm wrong. I hope I end up really liking these. I hope using these on the right paper opens my eyes and I'm like, yeah, they're onto something, but I'm not going to let that dissuade me from trying to give as, you know, honest a review as possible. And I will probably be updating the Amazon review section for this once I finish my review, good, bad, or indifferent, because I do think that people need to be aware of what's available out there. And I'm definitely going to be thinking a lot when I'm doing the comparable watercolor section for this review, how this ranks, because often when people are so overwhelmingly positive about a very cheap set like this,
It may be because they just haven't had a chance yet to play around with other watercolor sets. So I want to be really deliberate during the comparable watercolor review section to be able to recommend some watercolors that are in the same price point, same accessibility that you guys might enjoy better. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this from my desktop. And this is a cellulose paper. It didn't really take the watercolors all that well. And we are going to now move on to the much more expensive Blick Studio Cotton Rag watercolor paper. This is a block bound paper, so it shouldn't buckle. It's 100% cotton, so it is a really fair way to test these paints. I've noticed that poor paints tend to per perform better when you're painting on cotton, although realistically, if you're buying this palette, you are probably using it on cheaper cellulose papers like the Canson XL, but I wanna give these the best shot possible, the fairest review I can. So we're going to use the Blick Studio Cotton Rag Paper. And this is a consumable. It does get used up as we do our reviews. So again, I want to thank my patrons because their support allows me to be able to afford these kind of consumables that can get really kind of expensive. So for this test, we're going to be looking for several things. We're going to be looking at opacity. We're going to be looking for and hopefully seeing some granulation. We're going to be looking at liftability after they fully dried. We're also going to see how the colors wash out. Basically, if as soon as you add water, they turn to nothing, they're probably dye-based watercolors, and I can't really recommend that. And I also wanted to talk to you guys about why I don't like dye-based watercolors, why I think they're just not a good fit. So dye-based is going to come up again once we know if these are actually dye-based for sure and when I'm talking about comparable watercolors. But during the student grade showdown, a lot of the really cheap watercolor sets, I'm talking like sub $20, maybe some of the $25 sets, instead of utilizing pigments and binders, they're using dyes that have been precipitated onto something, a substrate kind of like chalk or maybe titanium white. They're not really forthcoming about their methods and I haven't really been able to dig up a lot of information on how this is is done. So if you understand the process better, please reach out to me because I'd love to be able to talk about this with more education and more depth. I just had a couple of friends who are more familiar with the watercolor making process point out that that's something that is done, that they know of people who do it, and that it is a cheap technique with cheaper watercolors. So if you've got more info, I would love it. Now, as an artist, I don't love dye-based watercolors. I don't even really like the um, radiant watercolors. I find that my work looks very plastic and synthetic with that, and it's just not something that I'm going for. There are artists like Nashi who make beautiful art with those. So it's not those kind of dye-based watercolors that are very on honest about what they're using. You can make beautiful art with it. It's just not for me. It's a personal preference in that regard. And a lot of watercolor markers are using dye-based inks. That's why they're water soluble. Like the Spectrum Aqua markers or the Karen markers are dye-based watercolor markers. An exception to that would have been the Winsor & Newton pigmented watercolor markers or the Albrecht Durer watercolor markers that are actually using India inks as their water soluble medium. So you do have some leeway regarding watercolor and how you're achieving the color. Now, I don't like the dye-based watercolors because one, they're gonna be very light fugitive. Watercolors that utilize a lot of dyes tend to fade much more quickly in the sunlight. And while I'm a watercolor comic artist, and sorry, if you guys hear weird noises, that's Beezle. Beezle tried to bite my mic. Okay, sorry about that. I'll have to hold the lavalier mic now so that Basil can't bite it. But, um, what was I? Oh, Life Fugitivity. So even though I am a watercolor comic artist and my pages are generally not out on display and I don't really sell my originals, this kind of Light Fugitivity, they fade very, very quickly. And I mean, within the course of a year, even if they don't see a lot of sunlight. And that's just not something that I really want to introduce to my work. I don't want to have to work around, deal with that or work around that too much. The exception would be the super granulating watercolors that I talk about a lot on the channel, but I wouldn't be mixing my super granulating watercolors in with regular watercolors either. I'd be using them for special effects backgrounds. Whereas a palette like this, you're meant to mix the colors you need. You're meant to layer the colors you need. And I have found that while you can do some color mixing with dye-based watercolors, they don't, they don't layer as well and they fall apart in the wet into wet test. All that color 
all that saturation just basically turns to nothing. They just fall apart. And I just find they don't really handle the way I want watercolors to handle. They don't granulate. They don't lift the way I would want them to lift. I can't do a lot of the techniques that I really enjoy with watercolor if I'm working with dye-based watercolors. Now, dye-based watercolors might be a good fit for brush calligraphers who are working with much more saturated mixes of the color. They're not watering it down as much, and they're not looking for, they might be looking for one or two wet into wet blends in between like rainbow color transitions, but they're not, doing multi-color wet into wet blends they're probably not doing a lot of optical mixing they're probably not doing a lot of layering so if you do that kind of stuff this could be a good fit for you or if you have very limited layers to your watercolor this could also be a good fit for you or if you're just painting for fun and relaxation it might be a good fit for you but and having not yet finished this review i will say there are better quality watercolors at this price point that I think you would be happier with. So having talked a whole lot, let's go ahead and start swatching on our Blick Studio watercolor paper. When swatching on the cotton rag watercolor paper, I'm looking for a few qualities. I'm looking for opacity. We should see a variety of opacities with these watercolors. So that's why I'm putting down some black lines using an alcohol marker and a ruler. This is gonna help us test the opacity. I'm also looking for granulation. So I'm gonna do a bit of a granulated wash with these to see if we can get any granulation when we introduce water and desaturate them from their mass tone. I'm also going to be looking for liftability. After these have had a chance to dry for a while, how easy are they to relift or to rework? Now, unfortunately, my misgivings that I had while doing the initial swatches, this paper did not prove any different. So our first paper was an inexpensive cellulose paper that came with the package. This is a much nicer cotton rag paper, and I can't really say that I see an increase quality difference, even though we're working on the nicer paper. The colors do look bright and enticing, but that's usually pretty true for dye-based watercolors and for watercolors that have a lot of optical brighteners. If you're curious about kind of why I'm so vitriolic about this, I recently reviewed a Michaels watercolor kit on stream and I painted the flowers that they provided using the paints that they provided. and Using the dye-based watercolors was just not the experience that you would hope to have with watercolors. They don't do wet into wet the way professional or even a good student grade watercolor should do. The colors just kind of blow out. They don't color mix as well. They basically fall apart when you add water and those are all traits you don't want with your watercolors. Now, if you happen to like the vibrancy of dye-based watercolors, like the radiant watercolors, and you're not gonna do a lot of color mixing, and you're not gonna necessarily try to do a lot of gradation with them, they might be okay. There might be a use case for these. And if you're someone who loves these kind of dye-based watercolors, please let me know. I'm always interested in the exception to the rule. I'm always interested in other viewpoints. I'm showing my cup of water to show you guys how much these muddy the water. I switch my water out in between rows to give the swatches the best chance of looking beautiful on the paper and not looking like mud. And I'm using filtered drinking water for this. I use that for all of my watercolor reviews and most of my watercolor paintings, if not all of my watercolor paintings at this point, because I find that that it's better than contending with the heavy water, or I'm sorry, not the heavy water. That is a whole nother problem. We might have that here though. Uh, no, with the mineral rich, the hard water that you tend to get in Louisiana. And I say we might have that because Waterford, the nuclear power plant is not far down the road. And I live off the Mississippi River and people dump all kinds of garbage from all the states above us into the river. So please stop doing that. So we're on the last row, and this is where, to me, the biggest glaring problems start to raise their heads since this is, we're entering the neutral zone, and neutrals 
For some reason with these inexpensive watercolor kits, their neutrals are always just garbage. They're always really lackluster. They don't really have a lot of body to them. They don't have the opacity that they should have. They just fall apart really quickly and they feel very synthetic to me. And since I use the neutrals really heavily when I mix skin tones in my comic work, this is a no-go for me. Just to give you guys a fairer idea of the colors, I'm going back and I'm applying a mass tone swatch of each color so you can see the color in full saturation. So these don't totally fall apart when you add water, but there isn't any granulation, even in colors where we would normally see granulation like this kind of black or the ultramarine and cobalt blue or some of the neutral slash earth tones. While they're more saturated, easier to activate than some of the other dye-based watercolors that I reviewed, like the Seamy Art and the Xyli W, they don't really granulate out the way you'd see pigment-based colors do. They do hold together slightly better than the other dye-based paints. When you add water, they don't just totally turn to nothing, but they also don't really graduate out. They don't wash out. You don't get that like subtle ombre effect that you would with better watercolors. And these are really at their best in the mass tone. Adding water doesn't really give these much of an opportunity to shine and it doesn't reflect any interesting properties. These are definitely in one trick pony land. Out of the dye based watercolors that I reviewed, these might handle the best and for someone who like for someone like me who struggles to use the radiant watercolors well, these might offer an alternative if you want to use dye based paints. They don't really need any pre-activation either. They activate very quickly and pre-activating these paints causes them to glob up on the brush. So for best results, just go ahead and use them straight up. So I'm going to let these mass tones dry and then we're going to move on to our lift test. And I've got plenty of room over here. So I'm going to go ahead and do my color mixing tests on the same sheet of paper. For my friends who are new here, the lift test is pretty straightforward. I'm going to use a synthetic flat watercolor brush. I'm going to use clean water and gently just try to lift the paints, dabbing it up with a paper towel. In and of itself, the lift test doesn't necessarily indicate a whole lot for each individual color. Some colors are going to be more lifting than others. Some are going to be more staining just based on the nature of those pigments, at least if we're not talking about dye-based watercolors. With dye-based watercolors though, everything seems to stay about the same. They're either very lifting because they've got a lot of additives that make them very prone to coming back up, or they're very staining because they're dye-based and dye-based watercolors will typically stain the paper rather than being able to be lifted up. So with higher quality watercolors, you would see a lot of variation. Some colors are gonna be very staining, some are gonna be very lifting, but with cheaper watercolors, you're gonna see a lot of the same. So what we would like to see is some variety here. What we're probably going to see is a whole bunch of the same thing. So as usual with these kind of dye based watercolors, all the colors kind of lift up the same amount. And this is a problem because with real pigments, you would have some pigments that are going to be more staining and more permanent, more lift resistant than others, just due to the nature of the particle sizes. When they all lift about the same, that's not really a good sign. 
interestingly, we see some variation with how liftable some of these colors are. Now, in a true and fair lift test, aka what Schmincke does with their paints, you'd let it dry for a couple of days. And I'm sorry, y'all, I just don't have that kind of time. So I let them dry to the touch. They probably weren't like fully cured, but this is how I typically run my lift test anyway. So at least it's consistent among brands. So not everything is the same amount of lifting, but everything is fairly lifting with some of the more obviously dye colors like this one here or this one here or this one here being a bit more staining. The ones that have more pastel to them are a little bit more lifting. So what I thought was interesting is some of the colors that would historically be more like earth tones and would be more lifting. So like a Venetian red, if this were a Venetian red, would usually be more lifting because it's very granulating. It's got a coarser particle size, so it's more prone to lifting up. This one is more staining than you would expect it to be. Same goes for, well, the ultramarines are kind of weird because generally they'd be pretty lifting, but they would also be granulating and these don't really granulate out. So this set is a little bit difficult for me to get a beat on. I'm not really sure how I feel about this set. It is better than I would expect a dye-based watercolor to be, but it's not as good as some of the other around or under-ish $30 student grade watercolors that I've reviewed for you guys. So I have kind of mixed feelings about the set that potentially only a field test will be able to resolve. So I, I'm kind of conflicted about that because while it should make for an interesting field test, I'm probably going to create art that I don't like and I don't like doing that, but it may be the only way to, for me to figure out exactly how I feel about these watercolors. So at least they're interesting. I reviewed so many things that are basically the same thing over again, that at least we're talking about something interesting today. So next we're going to move on to the color mixing test. And that's done in two ways. We're going to do atomic mixing, where we take two colors and mix them together to make our secondary color. And we're going to do optical mixing, where we glaze one layer of color and then go on top of it with another layer of color. And typically for this, we wanna look for our primaries because we wanna be able to mix secondary colors. And watercolor color theory is a little bit different than like optical color theory where we're using light to generate colors. So we think about things as warm colors and cool colors. And I've got a tutorial in my watercolor crash course where I really talk about this a lot. So if you're kind of confused about what I'm saying, I can give you guys the short gist of it, but I hope you guys will check that video out because it explains it a lot better. So for our warm and cool colors, we can start with the colors that I want to do my glazing with. So we'll start with red. Red is typically a color that people think of as a warm color, right? It evokes fiery feelings, it evokes passion. But within red, you have a cool version of red and you have a warm version of red. The warm version of red is closer to yellow than the cool version, which is closer to blue. So here is our warm version of red. And then we're gonna do our cool version of red. And I didn't reactivate these paints. We're working with them as they are. I find that they work a little bit better that way. And all colors can be either warm or cool, but even blues and yellows can be warm or cool. So to move this so you guys can see, this one would be a cool yellow. It's closer to blue. And this is important because this is what, how you mix like pretty greens, pretty oranges, pretty purples, is by knowing whether the colors you're mixing are warm or cool. And then I will use, no, actually I want deep yellow for that. And we can go even warmer. We could do golden yellow. And this is something that takes some practice. If it doesn't come like innately to you, don't feel bad. You're not less of an artist. It just takes a little bit longer. It took a little bit longer for me. Many schools don't even bother to teach it, not because it's not important, but because it's, I don't, I don't know why they don't bother to teach it, but they don't. Some do, some don't. So next I'm going to grab mid blue. That's kind of close to a phthalo blue. And I'm preparing my optical mixing grid right now. So we're going to let these dry while we do our atomic mixes. But I thought this was a good chance to explain this concept 
Because I figure, so the interesting thing about my reviews is they get a lot of new views from people who aren't familiar with my work and aren't familiar with my channel. That's why I always kind of reintroduce myself and reintroduce what I do. Their ultramarine blue just isn't as sad. It's more like a cobalt blue than an ultramarine blue. It's not really war as warm as you would think. Um, so sometimes with some of these like student grade showdowns, I like to use this as an opportunity to reintroduce and re-explain topics that I've covered before but that someone who Googled this set might not necessarily be familiar with because they haven't watched my other tutorials. So if I'm repeating myself, it's, it's a bit with intention. I would love to encourage new faces to stick around and see what else I've got. I'm always releasing new reviews and new tutorials. And my goal is to make art more accessible for more people. So that was a quick explanation of warm and cool colors while also setting down our optical mixing grid. So I'm gonna move our swatch sheet, which was helpful in selecting our colors, and we're gonna move on to atomic mixing, which I'm going to do in time-lapse. So as I'm mixing the colors, I discovered that the ultramarine in this set is really, really weak. It has basically no mixing or tinting power, so the purples that you mix with ultramarine are going to be really weak. Basically anything you mix with this ultramarine is going to be really weak. Some of the mixes start out really brilliant, but then as they dry, they dry really dull. So this probably isn't a good set if you like mixing your own colors like I do, or if you are going to be showing the art after the watercolor has dried. So uh, I'm not trying to call anybody out. There's like a whole contingency on Instagram or a whole fleet on Instagram of brush letters who you only ever see their work while it's still wet. And it's probably because they're working with cheaper watercolors and they tend to be the most brilliant when they're still wet. So I get you, I'm not calling you out. But uh, there might be enough range with these that you might squeak by with what you have, which might make it ideal for card makers who aren't interested in doing a lot of painting necessarily, but do want an easy way to add color. You can see how much the colors shift here in the hyperlapse. So optical glazing seems okay. There isn't a lot of reactivation, but there are some hard line edges with the yellows in particular. And that's something that I've noticed is pretty common among these dye based watercolors. It's almost like they form a little bit of a resist. Overall, color mixing is kind of eh. Their ultramarine blue is one of the weakest I've seen, minus some of the really atrocious brands. Like in the set, it's one of their weakest colors. It just doesn't really look like an ultramarine blue should look. And while we were able to mix colors, the colors themselves are a little bit more muted than I really would have liked to have seen. Some of the mixes were more challenging, like mixing a Payne's Gray because the ultramarine was so bad is kind of a challenge and also because they're neutral tones their browns and their yellow ochres are just they're weird they're dye based they're too saturated for what they're supposed to be they're not granulated enough they're just they're just weird for what they are and some of the oranges are just not as intense as you'd hope to see and dry to like this really like flat dull almost like a gouache sort of look it's hard to really explain unless you're more familiar with watercolor and you're more familiar with other student grade brands and also professional grade brands but we're seeing a lot of stuff that just isn't really good if you're used to professional grade watercolors these are probably not going to cut it for you like the mainly yang pigments and the rosa galleria and some of the superior stuff even if you like professional grade stuff and use professional grade stuff those have a place because they're a lot of fun and they bring something different and they're at a lower price point and then you have some brands that are just so like what mm, that uh, like, kind of like why why would i buy this if i already have that right this is starting to kind of fall into that, but like I said, it's really hard for me to get a bead on this one, which is kind of unusual because usually I know if I like it or if I don't like it. And this one is like not good, but not bad, but not so bad that it's good and not so bad good that it's interesting, if you know what I mean. It's just kind of a weird one that's a little bit more challenging to pin down. So it's really going to be hard for me to give you guys a verdict. Sorry about that beeping. That was my dinner screaming at 
So I am going to clean off this palette and then we're gonna move on to our final test, the wet into wet test. The wet into wet test is kind of an important one because this is where a lot of brands just fall apart. And this is, in my opinion, a test of whether student grade watercolors are really capable of some of the techniques that you actually might want to practice as a student of watercolor and become familiar with before you invest in more expensive paints. Wet into wet is one of the things that is just brilliant about watercolor. It's one of the shining examples of what makes watercolor watercolor and not necessarily acrylic or gouache or oils. And to me, if student grade paints can't handle wet into wet, then they are of no use. They are no good to me. And of course, as I disclosed earlier, I do have my bias as a watercolor illustrator and comic artist. I'm starting to think this set could be good for brush letterers or even card makers, people who have a slightly different use case and have slightly different expectations of their watercolors might genuinely enjoy this set. But if you do watercolor illustration and you use a lot of water and you do a lot of wet and wet and a lot of washes, this is gonna be the part where you really need to pay attention and this is going to be the part where I'm really paying attention. So I have another block of Blick cotton rag watercolor paper. Again, big thank you to my patrons. You guys keep this stuff rolling and it is going to be able to handle a lot of water because water is what we're going to throw at it. We're going to throw a lot of water and a lot of color and we're going to just see what happens. Do the colors intermix well? Is there a lot of scaling? Is there a lot of like optical brightener halos? And we can talk about that if we see those. Do the colors kind of fall apart when we add water? The wet and wet test really tells a lot, tells us a lot about these paints. So I need to go switch out my water cup because if there is one thing I know, these paints muddy the water fast. There's a lot of optical brighteners in these paints, but that isn't necessarily the worst thing. It just can make them more difficult to handle. And we'll really see if that causes a problem with our wet into wet test. So the wet and the wet test tends to reveal a lot of problems with cheaper watercolors and it's one of the reasons I'm so glad I've started doing it. I don't really have a real use for the paper after. I mean, it sometimes makes for pretty scans and pretty digital assets, but I, I personally haven't come up with a way to use it yet, but that doesn't mean I won't. But it's so useful for finding the flaws in these kinds of watercolors. There are a, these definitely seem like dye-based watercolors based on our wet and to wet test and many of the colors lose their potency in water. There's some strange grittiness to some colors that isn't quite granulation and might be the substrate they're using. I would say these are kind of unpredictable when there's a lot of water involved and probably aren't a good choice for illustrators and comic artists who use a lot of washes, do a lot of wet into wet, or do a lot of layers. During the wet into wet test, we used a lot of water and I tried to use a lot of color. These definitely seem like dye-based watercolors and many colors lose their potency in water. There's some strange grittiness to some colors that isn't quite granulation and might be the substrate they're using to adhere the dyes to. I would say these are kind of unpredictable when a lot of water is involved and probably aren't a good choice for illustrators and comic artists who use a lot of washes or who do a lot of layers in their watercolor art. So let's talk about comparable watercolors, both in price and in performance. There are a lot of dye-based watercolors out there and I've reviewed many of them. So I don't really want to spend too much time talking about them because really I'm just going to say don't. They're all kind of the same. They're all kind of terrible. These let me move the examples I just pulled out. The Meaden watercolors are pretty comparable to the Artie Box, the Diane W. They're a bit better than the Semi Art and the Xyli W, but there's definitely better watercolor palettes out there for around the same price. Let's instead spend our energy talking about watercolors that I think will make you happier. And I pulled stuff that's all around the same price 
30 something ish price point that the maiden watercolors are at now sometimes these are more expensive sometimes they're less expensive so you might want to use a service like camel 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 or honey to help you track when the prices of these things are historically low i don't have any affiliation with either joseph uses camel 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 to track all sorts of things to be able to buy them when they're at their lowest and i use honey because it lets me know if that's like a really good price for things and that's how i'm able to share deals with you guys sometimes so i don't see any kickback from them i'm not on their payroll they don't even know i exist but it can be a way to shop for art supplies while on a budget so let's start with the mei liang pigments and some of her sister palettes and i don't have all of them here but i have reviewed a number of them so i do have some experience <laughs> some considerable experience with them so this is the mei liang or the pretty excellent pigments or the parrot watercolor palette you'll hear this referred to by a number of names it is available i believe in 24 36 and 48 sets this is the 36 i think the color i just think this is other than the palette itself this style of palette is nicer than this style of palette here but the watercolors inside even though they're just little chiclets of paint in a really thin plastic liner these are much higher quality than the bean paints and i've seen this pa this palette is often hovering around the 20 dollars range i've seen it as low as 16.99 i've seen it around 24 i paid way more than that because i bought it at my local brick and mortar and i like supporting local but if you're on a budget and you want to shop savvily you can usually find this palette for around twenty dollars you may also want to check aliexpress it is also sold there this is made by the same company that makes paul rubens and this is part of their student grade line and the palettes are typically in this cute pastel teal or in a pastel pink and it's just like a decent accessible little palette my only real complaint about this palette is one there's not like a lot of granulation to the paints but as you can hopefully see the neutral tints just feel better they have more nuance than the neutral tints in the meden their ultramarine blue is a lot better than the meden ultramarine blue all in all the colors just hold up a lot better while they are cheaper paints they're not so cheap that they're unusable and in my field tests for this i was able to paint anything i wanted to paint i didn't run into any issues i kind of forgot i was field testing it while i was field testing it because they were very easy to use so that's a really good sign a sister palette to the pretty excellent is the aon palette this is also made by um shanghai pigments so the people who make um Paul Rubens, sorry about that, brain, brain went ADHD blank for a minute there. They also make the Owen palette. I didn't grab the Owen palette because it's a cake style watercolor and I didn't really find that to be comparable. I like the style of this palette a little bit better, but otherwise it's pretty much identical to the Mei Liang pigments palette. This is also a 36 half pan set. You actually get little half pans. They're in these cute little square custom half pans. I think you could get a regular size half pan in here without too much trouble this one comes in i think yellow pink and blue but pretty similar color range in fact it's basically the same color range as the mei liang pigments you actually get a little bit more information about the paints and just all in all i think it's a higher quality palette than the meden palette this one can sometimes be harder to find i have seen it on amazon i got mine on aliexpress but when I was doing the review for this, I couldn't find it anywhere, and now I'm starting to see it again. But it is also usually in the $20, $25 price range. So that would be the Shanghai Aowin. Let me see if I can find it. Nope, not written in English, but the Pretty Excellent and the Aowin palettes would be better palettes for you than the Meden palette. So if you've watched my reviews for a while, you'll know that I have a bit of a love affair with Superior Watercolors. This is one of my favorite gimmick palettes. It is the Superior Fan or Screen Style Folding Palette. It's kind of like a Gansai style 
color range. If you like that, you might like this. Can't get that last one open, but there you go. In this, we get 58 colors. They are thin little chiclets of paint. You can see mine are starting to dry out and craze and crack. Even though I live in Southeast Louisiana, you'd think they'd hold up a little bit better. And I do keep them in the lovely gift box that they came in, but those things do happen sometimes. But if you're not interested in a gimmick, if for whatever reason this palette doesn't float your boat and I have reviews for all of these here on the channel so if you want to learn more about something before you spend your money I got you this is a different packaging so it's it's a white label but it is the superior student grade palette so it's kind of a plastic palette sort of like the Sakura Koi palette it's fine if you see the Shapira Farben watercolors. I'm pretty sure they're just white labeling these. Now I have a field test for these, but it's under the Shapira Farben one. So if you want to see how these handle, that could be a good way to go. And I believe the Shapira Farben one is, is bigger than this. I just can't remember off the top of my head how big it is. This is the 24. I think they have a 24 and a 48. And then finally, we have the Superior Master Level Solid Watercolor. Again, very cute packaging. I don't know if that's a selling point for you. I like it myself. I am pretty sure this is what Etcher is white labeling for their Etcher watercolors. So it also comes with a swatch sheet. Decent, gran not every color is granulating, but there is some granulation. Look at that ultramarine blue. Now, look at this ultramarine blue. Mm -hmm. So you can see it's just very muted compared. Now this is more expensive off the top of my head. I don't know how much this one is. I do know that the Artify Superior set is in the $20 range. This one's a little bit more expensive. If you get it on AliExpress, you may pay less, but I wanted to throw it in there just to show kind of Superior's range. This is fun. To me, this is not enough of a gimmick. The paints inside are fine, but I like a gimmick when it comes from Superior and these just weren't wild enough for me but they're fine paints and i definitely think they are leagues better than the meaden paints so if you've watched the channel for a long time you'll remember when i first reviewed the mozart como rebi set now mozart is another company on amazon that white labels their entire product line so some of their products are kind of hit and miss i've gotten some that i really don't like but i do really like this particular como rebi palette i do not like their metallic como rebi palette but this one is better these are gansai style watercolors you get full pans. I have used the heck out of this palette. So I use this when I'd like to, when I do edigami watercolors, just because this doesn't take up as much space as like my Kuratake palettes. And I just, you can check those videos out, but it's a joy to paint with. You don't really have to struggle with it. And you get a lot of paint for your money and you get a lot of colors for your money. Now me personally, I could take out all the neons. I could take all the, out all the metallics. I don't care about those. You can see those have been hardly touched and they could just bring more colors in. The downside though to this being a white label product is as I use up colors, I probably can't replace them. That The whole pans are removable, but they're pretty... There we go. They're, some of them are kind of gummed in because I'm a sloppy painter. And they are labeled on the bottom. So if you guys know who um, Mazart is white labeling this from, let me know because I would like to be able to order refills for this. And this little palette hovers from $20 to $24. With inflation, it might be a little bit more. But I think you'll probably, you'll definitely like it more than this Meaden palette. I like this palette. I think you guys will like it too. We also have the Rosa Galleria palette. They, these come in various sizes. This is the 21 color palette. So it's similar to the White Knights watercolors. And you also get full pans with these. Um, so when I did the field test for this, I noticed that these are a bit more opaque than what I typically like. And I've noticed that like Eastern European watercolors, like German watercolors, these, the Roman Schmalls watercolors do tend to be a little bit more opaque. That doesn't make them bad. It's just a different formulation and it's just not my preference. I like really transparent watercolors, but that doesn't make them bad watercolors. It just means it might not be for me, but it might be for you. So if what you like about the Mead and Cup palette is those really bright saturated colors, I do think the Rosa Galleria palette will kind of scratch that itch. And this is around $36 for the 21 
whole pan set but you are getting whole pan so you're getting a lot more watercolor and it's a very similar palette style to the Meaden set and finally we have the Montmartre watercolor set this is much smaller I will admit I think it's a 12 color set I really like it's a metal package and I just really like the way they've done the ring on the back it's much sturdier it's much larger it actually rotates and you're just let it's less likely to ca cause hand fatigue so uh, you can see the colors on the back this little set surprised me I thought it was gonna be garbage and I was actually impressed now much like the mainly Yang pigments it does have the cheap plastic liner and the paints are a bit smaller but this is also a much more affordable palette I think it's under $20 but that may have changed since I bought it you have a mixing surface up here this is very flimsy and cheap but it is removable and then when you use these up you can just take this out and you could retrofit it with different watercolors especially if you could find like some way to make like a cardboard riser so that you could put your own watercolors in this so it does have some reusability but i think these are higher quality watercolors than what we're seeing here in the meaden palette but if you have experience with both let me know what you think if you have experience with both this palette and any of the other palettes we've talked about today and you don't you disagree with what i said you've had a different experience let me know i mean obviously be nice be kind about it but yeah you can totally let me know down in the comments i always love hearing from you guys and if you guys ever have info that i don't have if you've got the skinny if you've got the scoop feel free to fill me in as well if you don't want to do it in the comments you can certainly come over to my art centric discord server the paint box there'll be a link down in the description for you guys and we can geek out about art supplies so what are the pros and cons of the Meaden watercolor palette to be honest it's kind of a challenge to think of pros so i'm going to start with that the palette itself minus the paints is a cute palette i actually own this style of palette in uh, different sizes i have some of the 12 uh half pan sets of this and i think i have some of the other meeting palettes like this just in different colors they make fine palettes they were one of the first really inexpensive metal palette sellers on amazon so the palette itself is fine but you can get the empty palette or the palette with just the half pans not even filled for less than the cost of this palette from Meaden themselves so i don't know if i can really call that a pro the colors themselves are bright brilliant fairly saturated but they fall apart really fast for the kind of art that i like to make I just can't see this really working for me. However, I do think this could work out for a brush calligrapher who might be doing one or two colors and they're not doing a lot of necessarily, they're not adding a lot of water. They're not doing a lot of wet into wet. They can let the two colors kind of mix into each other without a lot of water involved. They might be a good fit for a brush letterer, especially because they're a bit more economically priced. So they could be good for practicing with or they could be good for a card maker who wants a bunch of colors ready and isn't interested in doing a lot of color mixing but frankly i think those other sets i just recommended are going to make those two use cases happier than this palette here so it's a challenge to find pros for this palette because it's not the worst but they're not doing anything interesting and it's not particularly good you can see where they cut corners so let's talk about the cons i am biased against dye based watercolors in this format the only kind of dye based watercolors i think i mean let's let's also be real here okay there are some watercolors that historically are what's known as lake pigments and that is when you take a dye and you basically precipitate it onto something and you turn it into a watercolor so indigo is a dye indigo is a watercolor uh, i believe indian yellow was a dye or in liquid form they precipitated it out into a watercolor so historically there are dye based watercolors out there but those aren't the majority of the palette and those are made typically those are like plant-based or sometimes animal based but mostly i believe like uh, Tyrian purple was made from like squid ink if i'm remembering it's, it's definitely 
something in that family, but I'm probably wrong about it being a squid. But anyway, so like that has always kind of existed. And if you make your own watercolors and you're doing them from plants, that's probably a route you're going. But this palette, A, didn't even say it was dye based. B, they're claiming to be premium watercolors fit for a professional artist, which they are not. And while the price is okay, there are cheaper, I mean, shoot, that Cool Bank watercolor palette I reviewed at the start of the Student Grade Showdown is a dye-based watercolor palette that's 20 bucks and it has like 72 colors, maybe more, in it and it comes with a bunch of other stuff and it's similar enough to this palette that I would say just get that palette. The price point just isn't so good that you can overlook some of its flaws. So yeah, I am kind of biased against dye watercolors, at least in this format. The only format I really like them in, other than the lake pigments, which we just talked about, and I think indigo isn't even made that way anymore. I think they've synthesized it since. But uh, the radiant watercolors, while I don't like them, a lot of artists really like them, and watercolor markers typically use dye-based, uh, I'm sorry, liquid dye-based inks. This just feels kind of scammy to me. Like... It's so cheap. It feels so cheap. It feels like they they have an okay palette and they wanted to find the cheapest watercolors they could to fill it with. And in my opinion, there's already so much of that on the market. We don't need one more of that. And I don't actually know what's going on with Meaden. I'm not like on their hotline. They don't tell me when they make decisions. I'm just guessing and supposing here based on my experience. So I could totally be wrong. And if you guys know differently and can send me some links, I would greatly appreciate it, but I would not say these are professional grade watercolors. I would not say they're premium watercolors. They are going to fade because they are dye based. They're going to fade very quickly. And that's just not gonna cut it for most professional watercolor artists. And some graphic designers, due to the nature of the work where you're doing a thing and then you're scanning it and digitizing it immediately, might not find it to be a problem. Radiant watercolors were historically used by comic artists going way back there. Um, they would mix the colors in specific amounts so that they could get a consistent skin tone that replicated what the printer was able to do, which there's a few blog posts out there about it. It's really fascinating process. Other than those examples, I wouldn't say these kind of dye-based watercolors are premium or professional. I find them to be a little bit frustrating myself. So what's my verdict on the 48 half pan Meaden watercolor palette? Look, I have to tell you guys, this one, I, I have to say, you guys got to pass. Like there are better watercolor palettes out there. I have reviewed a bunch of watercolor palettes here on the channel. I hope you guys will check some of those reviews out and find something that you like, find something that you love, because I really want you guys, if you haven't tried watercolor, I want you to try it. And I want you to enjoy your, even if you can't paint the things you want to paint, I want you to enjoy using the paints. Half of the joy of watercolor is the watercolor itself. And you don't have to spend buku bucks to get good watercolors, but honey, these ain't it. These are not it in my opinion. And, and maybe your opinion differs and you ought to let me know down in the comments below because I do enjoy hearing other viewpoints when it comes to art, when it comes to illustration, when it comes to making things. But I would say generally, any of the other palettes I talked about would make, I mean, minus the ones that I said are dye-based and, and not great, would make you happier than this palette here. So to me, skip this one, get one of those other ones. I don't have any affiliation with any of those companies, nor do I have an affiliation with Meaden. So the only joy, the only thing I'm getting out of you skipping this and getting something else is the joy of knowing that I might have inspired the spark of watercolor and another artist, which is really cool. And that's the kind of legacy I want to leave. So skip this set. So honestly, I was pretty disappointed with this set. I am so tired, so bored with these sort of dye-based watercolors. While this set does look aesthetically pleasing, all the colors look bright and shiny and very like, wow, watercolor. It's still another dye base set. They're a little bit more saturated than some of the other dye base sets that we've reviewed here on the channel, like the Xyli W and the See Me Art. 
but they're still not pigment-based watercolors, or at least I'm pretty sure they're not pigment-based watercolors. And as we talked about earlier, that's going to cause some significant issues. These might be fine for brush lettering, or if you just want to practice certain watercolor techniques, but if you are looking to achieve a full range of watercolor techniques that include lifting and granulation and wet and to wet techniques that have different amounts of granulation to them, because this is all the same, it feels very flat. This set isn't going to make you happy. But if you like the look of dye based watercolors, like the radiant watercolors or watercolor markers, you like how smooth it feels, you like how cleanly it might layer on top of alcohol markers, because I will admit traditional watercolors layer kind of muddy on top of alcohol markers. So these might be a set for that. And that might be a direction for me to try these in now that I'm thinking about it. But unless you kind of fit into those specific use cases there are other watercolor sets that we already talked about that i think are going to make you a lot happier would i use this for my watercolor comic seven inch Kara? no would i use this when teaching classes unless it's a dark horse that performs really well on top of alcohol marker that's also a no. It doesn't really do what I need it to do and it doesn't demonstrate the sort of techniques that I'm looking for when I'm teaching watercolor and when I'm familiarizing students with watercolor. So for me, this set is a pass. If you like the look of the palette, if you think the palette itself is cute, it is. Meaden sells the palettes empty. You can also get them on AliExpress for less than what you would be paying for with this palette here. So my verdict on this palette is skip it. I really can't recommend it. For me, it just doesn't do what it needs to do. I'm a little concerned because the Amazon reviews are very glowing. People seem to like it, but it's kind of like my concern with the Pabio palette and maybe that this was their first watercolor or their first watercolor set that wasn't like the Artist Loft watercolors or some other watercolors that perform even worse. And considering it's about $30 and there's a lot of good sets you can get for about $30, I'm like, oh, I wish I could introduce them to some of those nicer sets. And that's why I've mentioned before, now if they're shopping for this on Amazon, this might not help them. But this is why I really love the idea of hands-on creativity, which is an event Plaza holds where they invite different art supply manufacturers to come and demonstrate their products and do workshops and let the public mess around with the art supplies so they can start to get a feel for what good art supplies feel like. And they can hopefully, some of the reps can't tell you anything about art supplies and some of them can tell you everything about their art supplies. It's kind of hit or miss. Um, but hopefully they can answer questions and point you in a good direction. And I would love to be part of such an event again. I've done it in the past. I had a boatload of fun and I would love to be part of helping people figure out what art supplies are right for them, helping them fine tune how they handle their art supplies so they can make the kind of art they want to make. And while I love being able to do that on YouTube, I'm reaching people who are already interested in learning how to do that rather than people who are maybe a little bit afraid to take that first step or people who benefit from learning in person. I benefit from learning in person. So I'm not sure how I could facilitate that because David's Art Center, while I love, love, love David's, they just don't have enough space in their store for such an event and everything else. Well, we also have a Moe's. We have a couple of Moe's. That might, but they're kind of small too now that I think about it. Um, and then we have Michael's and Hobby Lobby. So we don't have a lot of options down here, but it isn't, it, that doesn't mean it's not something that we could push for in the future. So I hope you guys found this to be helpful. If there, so I am kind of wrapping up the student grade showdown. I only have a few more sets. Most of them are the Himi Mia watercolor sets. I'm really hoping to give them some redemption because they really burnt me earlier. And I also have um, that Cotman travel set that I want to compare against the Phoenix watercolors. And I have like a couple more sets coming in here or there. But if there is a student grade set that you are curious about that you would like to see me review, let me know down in the comments or um, on my community tab or in the Discord server, the paint box, or you can help fund reviews like that by joining me over on Patreon at patreon.com slash Now, if you can't afford to support the work I'm doing on Patreon, that's totally cool. I definitely understand it, but it would really mean a lot to me if you check out some of my other work. I share art all over the internet and you can find more of it here.
Another way you can support what I'm doing without spending a dime is by reading my watercolor comic, Seven Inch Kara, which I'd love to tell you about right now. Seven Inch Kara is a whimsical story about a seven inch tall girl named Kara who discovers a huge family secret and sets out on a big adventure to discover the truth. There's kitten riding, friendship, and lots of tasty food in Volume 1 and Volume 2 of 7-Inch Kara. You can read it as a webcomic at 7inchkara.com or you can purchase a copy for yourself or someone you love. If you absolutely fall in love with it and would like to own physical copies for yourself, they're available at the Natto Shop, N-A-T-T-O-S-O-U-P dot com slash shop. There'll be a link in the description below. But if you can't afford to do that, which again, I totally understand times are tough and we've been trying to keep our place prices the same through inflation, but I understand that a dollar has to stretch a lot farther than it used to these days. There are two very easy ways you can help. There's actually more than two, but two big easy ways you can really help me out. One, you can recommend 7-Inch Kara to a friend. Help me spread the word. Help me get new readers. You can also leave a review on Amazon or Goodreads. If you've read the webcomic, you've read almost the entire thing. The books do have some fun special bonuses and additional comics and lots of additional art and even how to make sections and concept art sections. So they're definitely worth reading. But the web the webcomic covers the gist of it so you should be able to say whether or not you like it and whether or not you can recommend it to somebody else but if you would like to read the full books for free there's a way you can do that that helps you and helps me and helps other people and that is to fill out a library request form at your local public library so this is a sheet of paper that has the author's name becca hilburn the comics name seven inch Kara. it may ask a few more questions sometimes they do sometimes they don't and then the library will go and buy that book so I see a sale and they'll put it in the library, which means you can read it. You can recommend it to your friends and it means other people can read it as well. So that is a huge way to encourage me and to help me out with what I'm doing here because a lot of what I'm doing all boils down to 7-inch Kara and the comics that I create. So those are some very easy ways you can help me do what I'm doing. Some of them cost a little bit of money. Some of them cost a medium amount of money and some of them cost nothing at all. But regardless of what you do, I hope you guys guys have a wonderful day. I hope this review was helpful in helping you guys find art supplies you'll actually use or maybe avoid art supplies you won't actually use. And hopefully I have inspired you to start your own watercolor journey. I've got some great tutorials for you guys to encourage you to pick up a brush and get painting. So I look forward to seeing you guys again with either another art supply review as we work on our student grade showdown or with a tutorial. I've been working on chapter nine of Seven Inch Kara. So I hope to, I'm working on a big comic vlog to share with you guys. So I hope you guys are looking forward to that. But as always, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Hopefully this was helpful in helping you guys make art habit. And I hope to see you guys again soon. Bye.